How's everybody's father feeling today? Let me take you guys back to when Tranquilo Club was just a young wrestling fan in elementary school. While everyone in class was raving about this epic feud that John Cena and Edge were apparently having, I was fighting for my life as the sole kid in class who watched TNA. Therefore, I was the only kid in class who was watching Christian Cage prove all the doubters wrong when he jumped the ship from WWE to TNA and cemented himself as a main eventer and more importantly, a world champion. You see, Christian has infamously always been overlooked by the higher ups in WWE despite his undeniable talent. Instead of elevating both Christian and Edge once the tag team came to an end, WWE opted to only invest in Edge as a main eventer. Fair enough, it worked out beautifully for them. But in Christian's case, he had to bet on himself by departing WWE and proving himself elsewhere. During his time in TNA, we saw Christian find his groove as a character. He worked as both a babyface and as a heel, but where he truly shined was playing the heel. To put it simple, this man was born to play the villain. And that is carried over to his current AEW run, where he has arguably become one of the most entertaining characters in the entire company. Tony Khan recently said that Christian Cage is currently on the best run of his career, which sparked plenty of heated debates. But if we're strictly counting character and crowd work, then I truly believe that this has a case for Christian's best run ever. Let's talk about it. Without further ado, at your disposal by popular demand, this is How to Be a Heel, a Christian Cage character analysis. The moment Christian debuted in AEW was a weird one, personally speaking. While I was very much a fan of his work as a singles competitor, especially outside of WWE as I mentioned, I thought he was unfairly hyped up before his debut. Nothing AEW said was wrong at all, Christian is 100% a Hall of Fame level talent, but at the time people were getting their expectations unreasonably high, myself included. And even with the warning from AEW themselves of, it's not who you think it is, obviously referring to CM Punk, who would debut later that year anyway. I still retain to this day that Christian's AEW debut would have been received much better, with near universal acclaim even, had he came in unannounced. With the benefit of hindsight, I think we all overreacted. That pay-per-view had an ending that completely took away from Christian's debut anyway, which is a shame, but that's besides the point. I was more annoyed with the fact that Christian was brought in as a babyface. It made sense though. At this point, Christian Cage was a legend who was coming out of an injury-ridden retirement. He deserved a warm welcome from fans before the trigger on his heel turn was finally pulled in AEW. And man, was it worth the wait. The fun part about the heel turn was that we all knew it was coming. Christian's alliance with Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus seemed too good to be true. He served as a mentor for both of the day one AEW talents for the better part of a year. He essentially coached them to their first ever titles in AEW as tag team champions. It was when the titles were lost, however, that the real Christian Cage we'd all been waiting for finally came out. The night Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus lost their tag team titles saw Christian Cage finally pulling the trigger when he attacked Jungle Boy post-match, therefore turning heel for the first time in AEW. It was a moment that got a loud reaction, we all saw it coming over a year ago, and so the reward of seeing it happen meant we'd finally see a different side of Christian in AEW. The following week, we got an in-ring promo from Christian Cage that forever solidified his place in the AEW history books. From the get-go, Christian was being booed out of the building for the acts he had committed the previous week. But little did the audience know that it was about to get much worse. You see, in wrestling, there's certain lines you don't cross when building feuds, and Christian Cage crossed them all right here. He spoke on Jungle Boy's mom and how she raised a piece of shit son, but perhaps the most memorable moment from this specific promo came when Christian Cage invoked the name of late Hollywood actor Luke Perry, who just so happens to be Jungle Boy's dad. Remember what I just said about crossing lines in wrestling? Yeah, well, Christian Cage doesn't care. Christian talked about how Jungle Boy looked up to him as a father, and then very crudely followed that up with these words. I never wanted to be your father figure. You have a father, but your father is dead. The reaction inside the arena after this line is in my opinion, up there with one of the best reactions a heel has gotten in the modern era. Christian Cage and AEW didn't know it, but a meme would be born out of this, because that's just how the internet works. But it was organic, it wasn't forced which I think is the part wrestling companies should take note of. The promo itself was the stuff of legend, but the internet's reaction to it kept it in people's heads, which sparked countless memes and video edits. 
This same night, we also got the beginning of the Luchasaurus and Christian Cage partnership as both abandoned Jungle Boy. Christian now had his big backup, which has been a staple of his throughout his career. Unlike what I usually say in my videos, Christian's character work is in subtle or this multi-layered arc. It's simple, and it thrives because of it. Christian Cage is a heel who isn't afraid to be booed, meaning he's not one of those cool heels who makes the babyface look bad. He comes in, plays the villain to perfection, and leaves. His approach to getting booed is different to, let's say, MJF when he was still a heel. MJF as a heel goes very meta and tends to bring up things that only the most hardcore of the hardcore fans would know. He jumps from one zinger to the next in quick succession. It worked for MJF, so I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's different, however, to Christian Cage's approach. First of all, Christian comes out in a turtleneck looking like the customer you hated serving at your shitty restaurant job that we've all had before. He just looks like a prick. Secondly, he has the most pretentious walk I think I've ever seen, which I don't even know how to break down beyond it looks pretentious. This all works in his favor when he finally gets on the mic and slowly builds up to the delivery of his singers. It's his cadence more than anything that separates him from other heels, a thing that comes with experience. He gauges the crowd's reaction and lets things breathe. It's a simple thing, but it's a big thing. When he drops a bomb, it sits in your mind for a very long time. Then the content of the promo, back to the MJF comparison. MJF usually caters to the internet fans on Twitter and Reddit with the substance of his promos. Christian Cage mentions someone's dead father on the other hand, and anyone watching will understand why he's such a vile person. As I said, there's nothing subtle about it, which is why both kids and even the oldest AEW fan alive will all boo him. The dead dad theme has been so monumental in this run he's currently on that I almost wonder if AEW put Christian Cage intentionally in feuds with wrestlers who have dead dads. The feud with Jungle Boy was the catalyst that ironically ended up with Christian losing in a final burial match at Revolution 2023. But since then, Christian has come face to face with the likes of Brian Pillman Jr., Wardlow, and Nick Wayne. Want to know what all those wrestlers have in common? Their dad is dead. And Christian has masterfully brought it up time and time again. It speaks to the unhinged nature of wrestling fans that we're all enjoying this. But then again, it helps that Christian and the wrestlers he's feuding with have all obviously agreed to this. It's almost become a phenomenon at this point. AEW fans have started to Google which wrestlers on the AEW roster have fathers who have passed away in a bid to get Christian Cage to feud with them. I'd like to backtrack a bit to one of the newest additions to the AEW roster, 18-year-old Nick Wayne, which I just mentioned. Before his AEW debut, people were already creating memes about him and Christian crossing paths simply due to the fact that Nick Wayne's dad, Buddy Wayne, is no longer alive. And so, when Christian had a mic in his hand, the dynamite before All In, while Nick Wayne stood in the ring with Darby Allin, we were all on the edge of our seats to see if Christian would bite. And he did. But it was the way that he did it that built anticipation so that when he finally got to the punchline, the crowd reacted huge at the mere statement of Christian Cage saying, I hear you have a father. Wrestling fans are sick, man. Myself included. Christian Cage's role as the unofficial TNT champion behind the actual champion, Luchasaurus, has made for some phenomenal TV. From an ironic jab at CM Punk, to kicking out his own daughter from Collision for simply asking to hold the belt. This man is on another level right now. It's no secret that right now, I'm not too into the AEW product, but that doesn't take away from the fact that guys like Christian Cage are still doing fantastic work. In fact, Christian is a huge reason why I tune in every week these days. It's to the point where I wouldn't even mind him winning the big one, the AEW world title, and having one last run as the main guy. The work he's currently doing is more than enough reason as to why. Christian has only further proven to a younger audience who didn't get to see him in his TNA days something that a lot of us already knew. He's a living legend of the game. Let's start giving wrestlers their flowers while they're still with us. Christian is now arguably AEW's top heel now that MJF is playing the role of company babyface. He deserves to officially hold company gold for his stellar career resurgence. This run is also proof that fans can influence a wrestler's character in a good way. When it's all said and done, Christian will go down as one of AEW's best ever signings. WWE's loss is the rest of the wrestling world's gain when it comes to Christian Cage. Because anyone can be a bad guy. 
but no one can be Christian Cage. <laughs>